Let's go. Okay. Hi. So this is FastDem. This is a distribution dev room. Thanks, thanks Joe, for organizing the, the room over these two days. Um, so I'm Luna. Uh, I've been using Debian for more than 10 years. I became a Debian developer in 2007. Uh, these days, I'm very active in the Tor project and uh, mainly focused on that. But I'm, I'm still uh, trying to do work for Debian. Today, I'm, I'm going to talk about reproducible builds for Debian because this is a distribution I know and that's what I studied. But uh, it's also a huge project that would need cooperation from probably all distributions and maybe others are willing to also uh, jump into the wagon. So uh, um, we'll see what happens. So what are, what are reproducible builds? Uh, Reproducible builds is the idea is that multiple people using different computers in different places could, from a same source package, uh, do the build process and get exact, exactly the same binary packages out of the source, bit by bit, identical, like same checksum. Um, why do we want to do that? We want, I mean, my main focus on this is to prevent targeted attacks. Uh, it's way, way much easier to uh, put a malware on one computer than on one million. Because if that one computer is the one of the Debian developer doing the build, or maybe the Debian build daemon, uh, then you get, a, you get a, a, a window where you can insert a malware into a package that will be installed in many, many, many different boxes, like Debian, you know, the, the, our, our installation base is huge. And it's going to be tricky to actually figure that there is this malware. Because usually when we do our security audits, we do that on uh, the source code, especially given that we do free software and we have the source code. So uh, we rarely uh, uh, study the actual binary and, and prove that the binary matches the, the source code. Uh, with independent parties reproducing the build, we can get some good level of assurance that actually the, the build systems are not compromised themselves. Um, it's also interesting, like, some, some, sometimes you want to, uh, if you have a reproducible build, it means that if the first time you built, you forgot to, uh, uh, you didn't like include the debugging symbols into the binary package, then you can get them built after a while and use that to, uh, to debug uh, after the initial shipment. Uh, and also for Debian, uh, it's use useful because of the multi-arc. Uh, for, for, for in Debian now, you can co-install packages that are on different from different architectures. Um, but you need to have the all the data files need to be exactly the same. So it's also uh, uh, is interesting for 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 this project. Um, for me, this, 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 my interest into reproducible builds started with uh, actually uh, the work that has been done by Mike Perry inside the Tor project. Uh, he, which is also work that has been like done before uh, as part of the uh, Bitcoin community. Like Bitcoin people wanted to have reproducible builds because you know they were handling like money and people were very like eager to know that the source code they were seeing were matching the binary. And so Mike Perry did, did build on that. Uh, and um, we now, for the Tor project, ship uh, the Tor browser bundle, which is the main easiest way to use Tor, is built in a reproducible manner. This means that we have multiple developers in different area, uh, all doing the same build. and ensuring that the result match. It, 
It's not a new idea. It's absolutely not a new idea. Uh, well, after starting the, the project, I got an email from uh, Martin Uku, uh, which said that, which told me like, yeah, I actually, we had this discussion in 2007, like six years ago. Uh, and I'm not sure how much he was, he was knowledgeable with Debian processes because uh, he, but he suggested that uh, we should actually do that, that have uh, bad identical reproducible builds. Um, unfortunately, the reaction was not super enthusiastic. Like Neil Williams, for example, didn't really like understood why. Or you had Manoj, uh, who said they would like be invisible, technically. Um, so yeah, but so uh, I wasn't aware of that, and I was like super enthusiastic with Mike's work on the top project, and I was like, we need that for Debian. And so last minute at the last uh, Debian conference in in, uh, in Switzerland, uh, we made a birds of a fever like small meeting, and I was like surprised, like 30 people or more came, and were like all interested into the project, and so we discussed what was the right approach and how we could do things and the various problem. And it, it was like 45 minutes really well spent, uh, I hope. And this led us to uh, actually kick off the, the, the wiki page uh, where like, we, we have all the, the project status. So I mean, in probably something happened, some Edward Snowden thing, I don't know, but like from 2007 where like people were very unenthusiastic from Martin Uecker's suggestions to that buff, it, it was like really, uh, uh, I think things have changed. So how do you do reproducible builds? Um, actually three things, it, it's, it's kind of simple. Um, yeah, I mean, first thing is like you record the build environment. Uh, we, the idea is that you record uh, like the compiler, the, the rest of the system, you, you, you uh, record what was used initially to perform the build. Then when you want to reproduce, you, have, you just need a way to actually recreate that initial build environment. environment. And the last part is that to have build systems that do not capture things that it should not capture from the environment. They should not have variations that are not like tied to the source code. Uh, so recording the build environment is actually, uh, on Debian it's kinda, we, we don't have a, a proper tool but have, we have already ideas on how to do it. There is a, something called uh, DH build info, which is actually put, record the environment, but put the information in binary packages and not in source packages. But I mean, basically the problem is not really hard. It's then a matter of discussing where putting this information makes more sense, like, yeah, more sense. Uh, reproducing the build environment is also, I mean, we still need someone to hack a proper script, uh, like hack people do or sbuild to do that, but we have a, a service that is called snapshot.debian.org, which is awesome because we have an archive of every single binary packages that ever ran through the archive for several years. So if the build environment requires a specific version of GCC, then we can get it from snapshot. So the idea is that, yeah. so the question is, do we need to store the name of the packages in this version, or do we need to store the actual binary of the compiler, for example? For Debian, we just need to store the, the version and the name of the package, because we have snapshot, and because also we want people to be able to reproduce the whole chain in the end, maybe. Um, and then you have the thing that is more like painful is, the various like variations that are coming inside, like from the build systems themselves. So timestamps 
are captured, like the current time, uh, build paths, uh, the file order, the local, many different things. I, I think I have not seen them all yet. Uh, to, to, to quickly run around, it's like uh, gzip, for example, if you, I'm not sure if you know, but by default, it stores the timestamp of when the uh, zip was made. Why? No need to. So we can we, we need to get but we need to pass the flag that says to JZip do not record the timestamp. Uh, all archives almost like R tar zip jar they all store also timestamp, uh, which most of the time is not useful information uh, and prevent like the second time when we try to reproduce then we have a different time right. So the archive is created with a different time and we have a variation that is not needed. Uh, Javadoc writes timestamps on the a comment that is that is hidden in the in the HTML page. So, if you are a developer, really, I told you, there's I, I'm yet to find a convincing uh, use case for storing the time of your build in a binary package. I mean, for Javadoc, what you're interested into is to know which version of the software it is, which, like, the, uh, I don't know, reference to the git head commit, but not the time. I can build an old version now, and then I get, like, a new, and it's all like it's, you know. Please don't do that. Please. Can, can we go to the questions later? Uh, I'd rather go to the end. Um, also, one thing that I discovered is painful is that some build system un encode the build path, which where which directory the build happens, and one of them is the dwarf files, like debug symbol for health, for health, you know, uh, and they have like these fields like debug. DW, uh, GW AT name and GW uh, AT com there that encode the build path, which is also like an unneeded source of variation because, for example, in Debian, we don't need that information. When you have a binary package, the source is lost, and there's no point in storing an arbitrary path in the binary package. Um, one fun thing is the file, file order problem. So when you use reader on directory, sometimes you will get like ABC, but sometimes you can get CAB, depending on the order you actually, initially they have been written, or the file system move of the day, or so basically, and some build system, they just do like, for example, you know, uh, they all the files from this, this directory. And then you get a different archives because they file a different order or different listing file or plenty of those. Uh, solutions is, is really simple, like you just sort the output. But it needs to be done. Uh, you have fun things with local. Uh, for example, if you, if you are like in uh, the C local and you have uh, extended letters like French things, then that's all at the end. And if you go to the French local, then the A accent grave is like after the A. Uh, so also that's a source of variations that needs to be uh, sorted out some way. Uh, you also have some build system that and then include like a host name, the uname output, the username, plenty of, of fun. Um, one way to solve all these variations is to cheat. Uh, this is the way we do for the Tor Browser bundle uh, and like Gitchen and also like uh, Bitcoin and other projects. You use a VM. When you use a VM, it's you, ha you have a standard VM. Uh, you ensure they use the same kernel. It uses the same username. It uses the same build path. Uh, it uses the same host name. Like you squash all these variations just by using a VM. Uh, and the other trick you can use is called leapfake time. And uh, leap fake time is a LG preload library that we like fake calls to uh, get time of day. Uh, it, it became like super more advanced uh, recently. You can you now the last the last addition was a mode where you can actually 
record a file uh, where with every single get time of the day initial code and they are like the time that is returned and then replay that the next time uh, so I mean you can cheat that works but we decided at the, the buff at the depth that we would take the hard path because we're Debian and we try to do things right uh, I think uh, but the idea is that we're going to patch things we're going to uh, configure the tool chain and, and patch the tool chain. Uh, for example, like we should have a, a default option that would be like Java doc minus minus no timestamp, maybe, uh, and, and you know patch the actual system so they would pass the minus n option to gzip so we'd not record the timestamp. All these little changes that would make uh, package repro reproducible without having the need to use a VM so that you can do any uh, Debian system and just run a script like you do normally to build a package and boom, reproduce. Uh, we did, so I have result. We did some experiments uh, uh, using EC2 VM instances from Amazon Web Services, uh, which is usually be used to, uh, to do a large scale archi archive rebu uh, rebuild, like to try, I don't know, last rebuild that was done was to try, for example, Clang, try, try building, building Debian with Clang instead of GCC and see how it goes. So we have this infra infrastructure uh, that was partly done by Lucas and Nussbaum, and also uh, these days it's maintained by David Suarez, which was really helpful, thank you, David. Uh, and so the idea is that we're going to build and then rebuild the very same package and see if the uh, we, we get a similar result or not. Uh, so how we do that? We do, so we build the package twice. Uh, and so the build process is standard as build, which means we set up a clean shoot, we unpack the source code, we install the build apps, and we build. And we do that again, like we set up a clean shoot, we unpack source code, we install build apps, and we, and we build. And the only small difference we do between the two builds is that we pass the timestamp of the first build to uh, DPKG through an environment variable. Like just to say, okay, first package was built, that epoch. And this means that in this context, uh, we have two variations out of the list that I've made. Uh, we have time and we have the build path. Both are different from the first build to the second build. Uh, there's no changes in the host name, the username, new name, file order, probably local. But it's still like time is the end build path. Uh, like seems like the hardest from what I've seen so far. Um, to perform the experiment, we did like we installed three custom packages in the shoot. One is DPKG. So we get a single timestamp for every file in the archive. Uh, instead of like having multiple calls to get time of day, we only have like a single timestamp for every file in the archive. And we reuse the very same timestamp uh, if it's coming from the environment variable. GPKG has been also modified to put files in the archive in stable order. So we always get A, B, C. Uh, there's a change to Deb, Deb Helper, which uh, modified the H, the H strip. The H strip is part of the Deb Helper that takes care of uh, debug files. And we use debug edit to mangle the build path that usually gets encoded into uh, the debug symbols. Um, and we also need to change, because debug edit is not able to work with indirect strings in dwarf files, uh, but I'm not going to get into the details. We have another options to, uh, to pass to uh, the C compiler. And we also uh, have binutils, which has been rebuilt with a uh, configure option, which is minus minus enable deterministic archives, which means that AR is going to drop timestamp by default. So that's only three packages three small patches. And we, so I mean the, the thing is it's still running, but 
last time I checked, which was yesterday evening, we had like uh, five, over 5,000 source packages and 3,196 out of the 5,155, 51 were actually identical. For those who don't want to be the math, that's 62%. I, the first try we did was 24. I actually couldn't believe it. That's awesome. Uh, so Manoj said it was technically infeasible. I really now believe the contrary. Uh, some of them, like for those who worked, like sorted by popcorn, you have fine utils, debug get, busy box, plenty of those. Uh, and for the failures that I tried to sort out, you know, which one, like why there was some package failing. Uh, so that was from 10 p.m. to midnight yesterday. So sorry for the rawness of thing, but um, so most of them have still like build ID mismatch, which means some problem with the build path that gets encoded into uh, the, the, the debug symbol one way or another. Debug edit was written by Red Hat. Initially, uh, there's, I mean, there's really room for collaboration because this is not a specific problem to Debian at all. Um, there's some unknown that I need to check manually. Quite a lot of that. Uh, there were like more than a hundred of jar files, which so timestamp in j jar files, Java Java archives. Uh, hundred packages are like Haskell, so I need to discuss with Joachim Breitner why why that. Uh, PHP packages, we had like a timestamp in embedded in the registry. I think we should just get rid of it. Uh, there were some documentation issues, probably timestamps also in documentation. Uh, there's some weird thing with the Python. One of the Python build systems sometimes put the depends in different orders, but they're the same, so that's going to be easy to fix. Uh, some R specific language, KDE documentation. There's Mono that I don't know how to deal with too. Um, there were like some dog book, also timestamps. Perl man pages, also timestamp. Uh, zip files, probably a couple of others. Most of, of these are like, the good news is that we can probably, for not that much more work, switch to 62% uh, to maybe 80 or something. Or at least that's, that's what I believe when I, I sorted that out. Uh, so yeah, because I mean, most of these issues are, I've listed are not probably not Debian specific, and I've seen that other distributions were also interested into doing that. Uh, there was a blog on the on the a blog post on the security blog from uh, Red Hat to discuss reproducible builds for Fedora. Uh, I know that OpenSUSE has something that is called Build Compare that is doing also some kind of reproduction. Uh, I'd be interested in uh, figuring out the details. And NixOS uh, is also very, very interesting into doing that. If you don't know NixOS, I suggest you look it up. Um, and I hope like more distributions we get interested in that we can like convince upstream to, for example, remove timestamps from archives more easily or like ch share patches if, you need, if we need to. Uh, that we'll see. We'll see how, how it goes. Um, that's. I'm done. We have a microphone back here, so if we're going to do any questions, I want to pass the mic around so that they end up on video uh, for the folks playing at home. So, who has the first question? There are like 8 million geeks in here and not one question. Come on. So please check the wiki page. Uh, subscribe to it. Uh, there's also a main list if you want to subscribe. Uh, yeah. Please. So at the beginning of your presentation, you said that uh, compromising one host is a danger to get uh, the same binaries. And then you said to solve this issue, we are creating a VM to have the same environment. But who is making this VM? Because so if you have a single VM for everyone, 
Well, yeah, I want to problem. do for Debian is that we don't have a VM. That's that's why it's harder to to do something. <coughs> I'm sorry. For Debian, yes. the idea is to avoid to create a VM. Okay. That's why it's harder because we need to patch much, much, more things. <coughs> okay, thank you. Keep your hand up so I know where I'm going. So how confident are you that there aren't any compromised packages in Snapshot? That at some point, hopefully, we will be able to uh, just bootstrap everything. But that's, that's a different issue. I mean, we need at some point to, uh, we need to have the reproducible build system working. And then we can start like ensuring the trust of the world will change. But it, I mean, both efforts should be done separately. Could we kill two birds with one stone with the, when we're dealing with the debug symbols? Because one of the problems I have is that when I'm debugging, I end up installing lots of uh, debug packages. And then I have all of them, the symbols are all over the place. And I have to just do endless substitutes in GDB. We could kill that problem at the same time as making reproducible builds. Absolutely. This is, I mean, uh, that's why debug edit was written for Red Hat initially. Because Red Hat has a policy that source packages get into USR slash SRC, and so they mangle the the, the dwarf path, the, uh, because then you can just extract the source package and it's going to be right at the right place for GDB to work. So I think we should do that in Debian too. Yes. Yeah. Um, thinking about your your problem is. If you are generating uh, one binary that have the same signature everywhere, you are not obviously sure that everything is built using the reproducible build. Do you aim at having the same list everywhere before making your build? Because if you have some uh, loaded libraries on runtime, you have to be sure that also these libraries have the same signature everywhere. Yeah, I mean, no, we assume that if the initial build was done with libglib12, uh, 0.4, then if we run start like libglib 12.4, then we're going to have the same. I'm not sure I got your question right. I'm sorry. Um, your system works if everything on your local system is made using the reproducible builds. No, not. We, we use standard Debian packages. The idea is to use standard Debian packages. Um, uh, how can I say that? Uh, I understood that your aim is being sure that several developers, almost right. everywhere in the world, have yes. the same binary signature of one binaries that you want to test. They but produce the, the, like the build system produces an identical binary for each of them, yes. Yes, but this binary will load some libraries, and you have to be sure that all these libraries have also the same signature, unless yeah, you are you not sure what you are running. If you want to have trust in the system fully, sure. But it's, I mean, it's a gradual process. The, the, when we when we talk about security, it's important to like it's always like important to have in mind the cost benefit ratio, right? It's it's for it's what I said. It's like it's uh, the cost of compromising one system that is going to be a developer system is less than the cost of compromising a million systems. It's and it's the same like compromising uh, one Debian package is a problem. It, it, it's, it's, it's impairing the trust of the whole like, verification process. I agree. But we, I mean, it's a gradual approach. As every package that gets reproducible build is something harder to compromise for an attacker. Every one of them. But it's, yeah, it's slow. But it's, we're going to get it, I hope. Also, uh, security related, how can you trust the compiler? That's, that's also a different problem. That's trusting trust, and some people are working on that. Um, I'm not going to, to get into the details. OK, that was a fusion. I mean, I'm not saying this is the solution. I'm saying this is part of the solution. 
Hi, um, I'm involved in uh, building a, uh, an Android operating system. Um, so during the build process, um, we actually have uh, Java applications that, that are signed by a private key and that are then bundled into a whole system image. And my whole problem is how can I uh, bring reproducible builds if I cannot share my private key? So what's the solution to that? You need, you, um, yeah, uh, ideally you probably need to have an intermediary step. step. Like people reproduce everything except the last step. But you have to, they have to be able to verify that the only last step that you're only the one able to run, which is encoding the private key, is you know, something that is not going to, to put my word at the rest of the system. But I'd say you, you, like, you have to use special tool in that case, yes. Um, so I wondered if you'd done any analysis of what proportion of an actual installed system, you know, how far can you get if you only choose to install reproducible packages, are we near? We're nowhere near being able to have a like a build daemon that contains only reproducible packages. I, I sorted the logs at midnight yesterday, uh, right? So I don't have an answer <laughs> yet, but it's a very interesting question. Uh, we should have a metric of that. Yes. If someone wants to uh, write a UDD query that would take the log, a list of package and give us like okay the percent of a build daemon that would be uh, uh, um, covered by uh, this list of packets that would be awesome. Please do so. You have already tried it on an embedded systems like ARM or something like this. I, s I know there are many problems on CPUs with bugs and you got so different builds on different machines with the same source and the same uh, same environment. So we did, we did the build on AMD64. I don't know. I really don't know. I, I think, I mean, it's Debian, but I mean, we have, we have like little, like, we try to have as little variations as possible between architectures. Uh, I hope it will work. I don't know. I haven't tried. Please do so if you can. Thank you. Are you planning uh, one day to add uh, verification? A process that will verify that the packages, binary packages that are published, they really correspond uh, with the source packages? So, something we've been discussing in Debian for as long as I've been interested in Debian is uh, binary, is, is uh, the end of binary uploads. So, when a Debian developer uploads a package in Debian, they upload both the source code and the binary for their architecture. That's how it's usually done. Uh, the problem is that sometimes they're like sloppy and they do not really use the standard build environment and so they have a binary package that no one can rebuild. I'm not talking about reproducible, like, re like at the identical rebuild, but just rebuild from source. Um, so we've been discussing in Debian for ages to just prevent developers to, uh, from uploading binary packages at all. Like just take the source, and then have the build daemon do the binary packages. But then people argued that if we do that, people are not going to test their packages at all. So we should not. What I want to do with this is that developers would not upload the binary packages. They would just put the checksum of the .dev file into the changes, and then the build daemon will rebuild and ensure that it matches. And then we have a trust that at least, you know, it's either like the VLG has been compromised or the developer system has been compromised. Or if, if there is a mismatch, or like both, but then we screw. Mm -hmm. Does that answer your question? Awesome. Hello. Um, oh. um, how how uh, how close are we to getting these small patches back into Debian? And um, do you have a rough estimate for when we're going to see reproducible builds, you know, by default out of the box? Are, are there any barriers or any controversial bits in the patches so far? I have quite frustrating discussions with uh, Guillem Yobo so far, uh, the DPKG maintainer. Uh, I'm not sure he's interested in this at all. So I hope that's going to be enough peer pressure to, and I mean 62%, right? It's not like completely crazy idea, we can do it. 
Uh, the patches are, I mean, you can review it. I find it, I find them like, okay. Uh, the debug edit thing is, is more complicated. We need either someone to uh, probably uh, patches, patch, do some changes to uh, debug edit to improve it, or to write, to rewrite debug, debug edit in another language. I, I tried to, I tried to work on debug edit and I failed. The code is, is too hard for me. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's doable, it's, it's, I think. At least, um, there is a, if you want to see, uh, there is a, um, if you go on the wiki page, we have a user tag so you can see all the bugs that have been reported so far as part of the reproducible bridge project. And every single like package maintainer, I said, please, can you uh, take that patch? It's going to make your package reproducible. Like, and it, they took it. I had no rejection so far, except like for the most like GPG things. But so I mean, uh, yeah, I hope. If you guys could work a little harder on asking your questions in the order you are in the room, that'd be really great. Just <laughs> <laughs> want you to get some exercise. Yeah. So in Fedora, we have uh, we have one particular reproducible build problem that I'm not entirely sure is solvable because uh, what we have is. Uh, when we build our live images or our ISO images, uh, these are all coming from pre-built uh, pre packages. Really, the only thing that's being done is that they're being turned into an ISO image. And one of the things that we've identified uh, every once in a while, since we're always pushing on the edges of what you can fit on a disk, uh, we, d we discovered that there's a, a, a drive geometry problem that we hit, where actually tur creating the ISO image, the same exact set of packages with, with uh, the timestamp faked out, will still sometimes produce a, a package that is one sector larger. <laughs> because, uh, because, <laughs> because, uh, because of the way the, drive, uh, the, the, uh, the sectors on the disk uh, line up. Right. So how do you work around that? That's a very good question. I hope you find out. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, this is going to be a collective effort or it's not going to happen, right? I mean, we have, I mean, the ta I mean the adversary is the NSA or something as big as the NSA, right? So, I mean, everyone together. Who's next? Anybody? Um, what uh, Debian release are you focusing your efforts on? Is it general? Uh, and, uh, it's development work. It's un unstable. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, the, so what, what the process of getting changes like that into Debian is you get as many packages as you can to fit the scheme you want. And then you propose a change to the Debian policy. But you want changing a, proposing a change to the Debian policy before you get like, I don't know, 95 or 90% is going to be uh, hard. And then also there is the release goals. But I'm not aiming to have Debian reproducible, uh, reproducible at least on a large scale before like at least two major release. Mm -hmm. Like think four or five years is not, I think, crazy given the amount of like s small amount of change that needs to be done and for how many uh, um, people needs to be involved. Mm -hmm. Unless someone is working full time on, on this for a year and then we can do it much faster. But, right. May I ask another question? How do you store the uh, build environment settings? Uh, you said that uh, you wanted to uh, store them either in the source package or my in the So my binary. idea is to so store them in the dot changes file, which is the, the listing of the binary packages and source packages with the checksum. It's a like, description of an upload, basically. And I think we could like just stick in there. And, and so uh, I mean, I know that Debian people will know where to, you know, talk about this kind of thing in Debian, but people from other distros, w is there like a mailing list or something that they should sign up to? There's a wiki page there, but is there more than that? So we have a reproducible build mailing list at Alioth. Uh, it's like listed in the very top of the wiki page. I'd be happy to see more people from other distros who subscribe and, and we exchange ideas or problems on the mailing list. Uh, I don't have, I, I, no, but if we have enough like discussion here, maybe we, we come up with something or we, I don't know. I mean, the, the, the Debian main list have very, very low traffic at the moment, so 
uh, if that's not like if, if it's okay for everyone to be on the Debian main list, then just join this one. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, considering that you can't here. Thanks. Uh, considering you can't uh, build everything reprodu reproducible, like for example non-free, will there be uh, like a section or a tag uh, or you can where you can non -free build? Non-free can be reproduced. It's not going to be going to be fully reproducible from source. Or maybe yeah. it's going to be reproducible from source. You can audit, but you can't change. Okay, but uh, assuming there will be a few packages which can't be uh, reproduced to a certain state, will there be a system that you can choose a system, just get packages we, we can build reproducible? I mean, we could have a dev tag and we could use things like that, but my hope is that we get everything reproducible. I don't see a reason that we can't, we can't come to that. Because, for example... But it takes much longer to get everything reproducible and in the meantime, you could uh, have a system which is already uh, on has this uh, uh, adjective. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, it's it's only the beginning. If you want to uh, to come with patches and 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 stuff, please join us. Hold on. Oh, wait, wait a minute. Uh, it's just a re suggestion to the the other guy. Um, maybe we could have a non-reproducible uh, archive, like the non-free archive, um, at some point, <coughs> potentially. It's. I mean, it's Debian, right? It's large. It, like, it's 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 easier to push large-scale changes in a small fashion. And discussing major change as one is, is is harder than to prove that yeah we can do it and just. Do it. If I understood correctly, you have uh, today one platform at Amazon that does the job, and we did one experiment. Yes. It's all. And my question is, maybe by your experience, are you afraid of discovering a new hidden factor that put your 62 into 10% because you have made some assumption on this platform, but making another platform elsewhere? So the uh, platform we used is S-Build. So it's the standard way that Debian packages are automatically built at the moment. So I mean, that's the target, right? At least for me, that's the target. How you want to uh, protect external kernel modules that will build at the uh, machine directly. So I don't think that is a solution for that, or is that right? I don't understand. Um, you can I, underst I, mean, I, I, un I, don't, I mean, I understood what you meant. Like, you can load kernel yeah. modules and then. You have uh, external modules with DKMS or something like that that you build at the host machine. You can't protect that, or? Right, so but you can protect that the source code has not been tempered before being delivered to the user. Okay. I okay. mean, that's already something. We have about five more minutes, so probably about two, maybe three more questions, depending on how efficient the questions are. Um, right down here. Um, so you said you could, uh, you, there's the dev tag that, uh, if you put a dev tag rubric, reproducible builds, maybe some people will start uh, using it and want to contribute and to fix the last package that they depend on and you would get uh, more developers at the end? Yeah, maybe. But we're not, we're not, we're not, I mean, we're not that there yet. I mean, we have patches. So, how can I say that? The, the question about how far we are like getting these patches in Debian is very relevant because basically my situation right here, like having this result, is that I want to discuss again with Gilem and other DPKG developers what is a proper patch to get into DPKG. And if we have a disagreement on it, I want to run it by the tech committee. And if the tech committee says that we can't have this kind of patches into DPKG, uh, and that the, the DPKG developers won't have patches like this, then I'm going to stop this effort at all. Because, I mean, you can't go to against the will of a project. Uh, but the idea is now is like to get more people involved. Like, all these reports, they need to be sorted. They probably, all of these, there's a, there's a, there are patches that can already be written and submitted and probably are going to be accepted from many tools. Like, if people want to hack on uh, JAR, by, like the JAR tool, if people want to hack on Javadoc, if people want to hack on Epidoc, if people want to hack on Debugger, 
if people want to hack on mono software, on OCaml software, on Erlang software, on uh, PHP, uh, all these are not right now reproducible and they should be. So there are like plenty of work that we can do uh, wherever or not and that is going to also uh, benefit everyone in the free software community, uh, is it Debian or not? Uh, so yes. yeah, there's work to do and, and it's going to be quite interesting. Um, do you expect any specific problems uh, with the package, the kernel packages, or is it just another package? So the good thing is that some people quite external to the Debian distribution, but I've been trying to guide them a little bit. Called they, they have a project called Mempo, and they've been working on reproducing the kernel, and they have a few patches for the kernel already. Uh, I hope they will be able to uh, push them upstream. I haven't looked at, at, at them, at, at the, their work that much yet, but I know they have a package that contain uh, Debian source, GR security, and that can be reproduced in their environment. So. One more. Or we're done. Okay, great. Okay, one, one last thing. Uh, e, please come talk to me if you're interest, interested in this. I'll be at the tour project corner of the Mozilla booth for the next two days. Uh, please. Thank you very much. <laughs>